Hey everybody, I am Carolyn Byers. I'm the Education Director at Madison Audubon. And usually I'm out in the community teaching live at schools and community centers, but now I'm, I'm teaching inside, bringing it to you. Um, so this is all a part of our safer and funner at home lesson planning. Um, you can find all of that on our website, madisonaudubon.org under the tab uh, safer and funner. <laughs> um, and there you can find all kinds of lessons and games and activities um, all to get your kid or yourself outside into nature away from screens um, and just enjoying all of the relaxing uh, relaxing vibes that nature brings us um, and the science <laughs> so today I oh I want to remind you all our summer camp our virtual summer camp starts um, the, on, on Monday next week I'm so excited everyone has something to excite them. Um, today we are talking about pollinators. I love pollinators. I think they're really cool. I will confess that I am a bird nerd um, and I don't know a whole lot about pollinators. So we're going to be exploring a little bit today. Um, we're going to be a super cool microscope uh, so that we can look up close at all the details. Um, and this is a micro explorers lesson. So at the end, we're instead of eight minute notes, we're going to be doing. Um, well, we're just going to be drawing and larger than life. Um, so if you want to join in, on get your pencil and any coloring supplies you want, and maybe your nature journal, maybe a piece of paper. Um, and I'm just going to go pop over to our Facebook on my computer. I'm still having trouble seeing comments on my phone, but I can definitely see them there. So drop me a line, say hi, let me know what you're, what you're seeing, uh, what you're up to, and if you have any questions, especially if the question is, I want to see that be up close again. I like those questions. Oh shoot. No, this is, this is perfect. <laughs> Okay, so <clears throat> I think, I think, I think we're ready to get started. I still can't see the, um, I still can't see our, our comments on here though. This is tricky, very tricky. I'm sorry, this is boring. So my kid today, he was out in the garden. I'll tell you a story while I'm looking for your questions. So it's not so boring. <laughs> um, my kid today was out in the garden and he saw something flying and he's three. And he um, was able to, here we go, I see it now. Um, he was able to see that it was a wasp and he gave it its space. And I was so proud of him for that because... Um, well, wasps are, um, oh, no. My kid today was out in the garden and he saw. There we go. Now I can see your comments. Add them if you like. Um, wasps are a little bit more aggressive. Um, and the reason for that, I mean, there's probably many reasons, but um, bees, when they sting you, they actually die. Um, and so bees are really reluctant to sting. They will only sting if their life or their hive or is in danger. Um, and... A wasp, though, they, oh, bees can only sting one time. Wasps, though, they can sting repeatedly, <laughs> and they don't usually die. Um, and so a wasp, it's uh, a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more uh, willing to sting. Um, and so they're, it's better to give them a little bit more space. So how do you tell a wasp from a bee? Let's take a look at that really quickly before, before we dig in too much deeper. So I have in my hands a wasp and a bee, um, and I will admit that I don't know what species they are. They're written on their little tags, but it's all the scientific names, so I can't really tell you. Um, this is a queen bee, though, so she is much larger than the others. Um, let's see. Oh, Violet says she's going to watch later. Hi, Violet. It's good to see you. Um, so this, this is a bumblebee, and while you can tell it's a bee partly because it has this very big round body, right? Um, and it does have two sets of wings and it's got six legs. 
like all insects. Um, and so this wasp also has those six wing or six legs, four wings, but it has a very narrow spot right in between the thorax and the abdomen. Um, so the parts of these bugs, so the head is up here, then there's the thorax in the middle and the abdomen in the back. And the bee is the same way, head, thorax, abdomen. Um, but there is a very large gap that makes the, the wasp look like it has a very narrow waist. So that's one way to tell a wasp from a bee. Um, and this bumblebee is very, very large. I'm going to find a honeybee. Here's a honeybee. So in Wisconsin, we have we ha we do have honeybees. Um, these are non-native, which means that um, they did not evolve to live in Wisconsin. They evolved to live in Europe. Um, and people brought them over because, well, we really like honey. <laughs> and I think back then they weren't sure that there would be pollinators to pollinate their crops. Um, and we're going to talk about that in just a second. So we brought hives of honeybees over, and people love them. All right, my phone gave me a little trouble there. I hope it's hope it's okay. Um, so people love honeybees, and they're, uh, lots of people have hives and raise them, and that's lovely. But we have tons of species of native bees that live in Wisconsin, and these are all bumblebees. These bees don't produce honey, um, but they do make little hives. Lots of them are underground, um, and they are fantastic pollinators. Um, so we do, we do need these for honey if we want honey, but these are very good at pollinating all of the crops that we need. Um, so what does a pollinator do? Um, oh, I suppose I should say that honeybees are much, much smaller and less fuzzy than bumblebees. Um, so that's a good way to tell them apart. I'm going to put this bee back, um, hopefully where it goes. <laughs> um, so pollinators can be any animal or insect, insects are animals too, that move pollen around from flower to flower. And usually they're going after pollen or nectar to eat it. Um, and when they move it around from flower to flower, they also move it from the male parts of the flower to the female part. And when that happens, the flower is pollinated. And when it's pollinated, the flower can make fruits and what we call vegetables, but are really fruits too. Um, and all kinds of, um, all the seeds. And so those pollinators are responsible for providing us with food, for helping the plant make seeds, and for providing lots of animals with food too. Pollinators are so important. Um, so let's think about what kinds of animals can be pollinators. I think I am going to let you type some of those in, in the comments. And I'm going to go talk about something else for a second while the lag catches up. So if you know an animal that can be a pollinator, it doesn't have to be an insect, type that in, all right? Um, so we have, let's see, I have a whole lot of specimens here to show you. And I think I will just pick up my whole tripod, but I am gonna make this go the other direction. Here we go. So I have all of these specimens to share with you today. And these are all really common in Wisconsin. And these specimens are ones that a scientist from UW-Madison donated to Madison Audubon because they weren't doing as much teaching as they used to be. Um, and so they wanted to make sure that their specimens got used. So all of these insects used to be alive. Um, and I'm not sure if they were um, killed specifically for this collection or if they died and then were collected. Um, we didn't talk about that when, when they handed them over to me. But um, I think it's this is a really respectful way to make sure these animals, um, well, to, to value their life even though they're dead now. Um, so there are so many cool insects here that I want to show you. Um, all right, so we're starting to get some comments in about my question for what kind of other animals pollinate. Um, so someone suggests bats, which is true. Bats are great pollinators, um, especially down in South America. There are lots of bats that pollinate there. Um, there can be pollinators that are small rodents, like mice that creep around. Um, hummingbirds, yes, people are saying hummingbirds, definitely. Um, there's a few other types of um, nectar drinking birds, especially in Hawaii, that they, um, they're pollinators too. 
um, butterflies, moths, um, all sorts of bees, some flies, um, beetles I learned can be pollinators. Um, my kid, <laughs> when he sticks his nose in many different flowers, I don't know how effective he is, but he definitely moves pollen from place to place. Um, Steve suggests warblers. I bet so. I um, have not seen them on the list for sure, but I I think most warblers eat insects, but I can't, I'll look that up. That's a good thing for me to, for me to check out. Um, so we have lots and lots of different types of pollinators. Um, and I want to show you some bees today uh, because I think they'll be really fun to look at with my microscope. Um, so this is um, just a, it's a 60 power microscope. I, I can't change the magnification at all. Um, and it just clamps onto my phone. Um, and this is one that I got online for, I think it was $15. Um, so if you're interested in one, you can just Google smartphone uh, microscope uh, and it will, it will show you, it'll show you this model. Um, and it's got a little light that I'm going to turn on. Um, and I'm going to Let's see, reverse my camera and stick this on the other side. And it's going to be a little blurry to start out with. Um, but I am going to find a bee. Let's find this bee. It is a red belted bumblebee. And let's look at it up close. It's a little hard to focus this. All right, so this is the bee's face up very close. And it is super cool. How about we back up and I show you a little bit more of this bee this way. Oops. Hmm. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay, so this is our red belted bumblebee. Um, let's see if my camera will want to focus on that. So it is a small bee, and I took the male. The males are smaller than the females. Um, this is, oh, <laughs> this is half of the queen bee. <laughs> she was, she was belted in with uh, two, uh, two pins because her it looks like her, her abdomen came off of her body. But this is, this is the male bee. It's a little bit small. Um, and I'm going to try and show you all of the different body parts for this bee. So the first thing I want to look at, we're back to this camera. Here we go. The first thing I want to look at is the eyes. And bees have two really big compound eyes. And you can see those there on either side of the face. Let's go a little bit to the side so you can see that one. And a compound eye just means that there's lots and lots of different, different parts to it that um, it changes the vision. Bees don't see quite like we see. Um, first of all, they have that compound eye that um, sort of fractures the image a little bit, I believe. You can Google you know, what it looks like, what, what a bee can see um, to check that out. Um, but they, they can also see a different light spectrum than we can. So they can't see the color red, but they can see ultraviolet, um, which helps them, well, flowers use that um, in their, the markings that flowers have, um, sort of to direct bees to where they need to go. And bees also have three small eyes. This is, I'm sorry, this is so shaky. Um, they have three small eyes right in the middle on the top of their forehead. They're called ocelli. Maybe I'm pronouncing that right. And those are really good at um, picking up light and dark. And this one, this bee has a lot of, it's got like a mohawk going on, so it's kind of hard to see that. I'm going to see if I can find another bee that will show us that a little better. Maybe this one. Oh yeah, totally. If I can hold my hand steady. Um, can you see those three little dots right in the middle of those eyes? Those two big eyes? Those are the three very simple eyes, the ocelli. And those pick up light and dark and shadow um, and help the bee navigate the world. So that's pretty cool. Um, and now we're looking at, now we're looking at this queen bee again. Oh, come on camera. There we go. This is that queen bee again, and it was an Eastern carpenter bee. 
It's very big and it does not have that mohawk that the other one had, which is why, um, why I was able to show you those eyes. Um, oh, someone says they got a microscope like me. That's pretty cool. Uh, tell me what you've looked at so far. I'm excited to see that. Um, all right, so we have looked at the compound eyes um, on the red belted bee, and we looked at the ocelli on this carpenter bee. Um, I want to look for, I want to look at the feet, and this one is missing its back legs. <laughs> These specimens get, they get used for sure. Um, so I'm gonna find one with back legs because the internet tells me that these have, these bees, they have um, rakes and combs on their legs, on their, the ends of their feet, that they used to clean their bodies with. And I would love to see those. So this is a queen common Eastern bee. This is how large it is. Um, so the queen bee again is pretty large. I'm choosing them because they're easier to use with the the camera and let me make this big again all right let's see can we find your feet oh so it looks like the claw on the end and all those little bristly bits might be the rakes and combs yeah that's pretty neat and let's look up here on the thighs of the bees. Whoa. Look at how hairy and bristly they are. So again, I'm not a bee expert, but when I was looking online, researching this beforehand, um, I looked at some diagrams and those were labeled pollen baskets. So maybe all of those little hairs help collect the pollen on the bee's leg. I'm sorry, this is so shaky. Whenever I tried to move my camera and hold the bee steady, I ended up breaking bits off of the bees. <laughs> so this is safer for the bees, um, but I haven't set up a, a way to hold both of them still at once. So those are the pollen baskets on the thighs of the bees. And look at that beautiful, beautiful reddish, yellow color on the legs of the bee. I would not have picked reddish yellow if you asked me what color a bee's leg was. That's really neat. Let's look for the antennas now. So here is the forehead again. That's where the antennas come out of the head. Let's travel down the length of the antenna. And a bee antenna is long and straight and it doesn't get much wider at the end. Some animals like moths have a little sort of like teardrop shape at the end of the antenna. And bees don't have that. There's the other antenna. It looks neat. It's like it's broken up into little segments. So we checked out the antennas. Where are those eyes again? Ocilli. There's the compound eyes. Hmm. Oh, I'm showing you the paper that's uh, labeling it. <laughs> I want to see the foot again on this one. Oh, that's that cool claw. Neat. All right, let's look for the stinger. Oh, someone says the bee's knees. Let's go check out some bee knees. And these are very highly segmented, so I'm not certain what exactly the knee is, because I know, I know that birds and um, a lot of mammals, they have, uh, their bones are different lengths, so what looks like a knee to us is actually their ankle. So I think this is the bee's knee, and I actually can't even see the part here, oh, there it is, that is connecting those two segments. It's so, so, so small. That is really cool. Oh, and the people who got the microscope say they've looked at leaves, hair, and teeny tiny bright red spiders. Neat. Let's look at the back of the bee. See if we can find a stinger. Hmm. You know what, this bee's butt 
is a little bit too close to the paper. It's hard for me to get a good look at the stinger. So I'm going to find a different bee. Um, hmm. There we go. Okay, I need to find a bee with a good stinger. Let's see. How about this one? So this is a male brown belted bumblebee again. Let's look at that. Oh, Rachel says her kids want to know if bees go to the bathroom. Yes, they definitely do. Um, I don't know much about bee elimination, um, but I do know that um, friends who have honeybee hives, they look at the door of the hive when it's springtime and there's still snow on the ground, but it's starting to get a little bit warmer. Um, and one way to know if the bees are active, even if you can't see them coming in and out, is to look for little, I think it's yellowish spots, um, right near the entryway in the snow. And that's where all the bees have been, um, they've been going to the bathroom after their long winter inside the hive. Um, so yeah, they absolutely go to the bathroom. They just do it outside, <laughs> like all animals. Okay, I'm going to flip this around and let's see if we can find its stinger. Mm. This one's tricky. All right, let's get right up in there. Oh, that is not a stinger, that's a foot. Hope that wasn't too exciting for anyone and then a lot of disappointment when it wasn't that. Hmm. I don't see this stinger. Oh, maybe that's the stinger. Looks like a lot of hair though. A lot of fuzzy hair. Let's try another one real quick. I want to show you a stinger. Well, I know what will give us a stinger. I see this one. The specimens are pretty fragile. There's a stinger. Woo, that's a big stinger. So this is why it's always good to be cautious around bees and wasps. You can definitely still watch them. Um, I wouldn't recommend trying to catch them to look at them up closer. But you definitely give them their space, treat them with care, because that is a bee's stinger. And this one belongs to that eastern carpenter bee. It's a very large bee. <laughs> uh, so it was very easy to show you the stinger on this one. It's so big. All right. Um, there's someone asking how many bees I have. Um, I can show you the picture of the bees again. Not the picture. I can... Oops, let me take my microscope off. These are the bees that I have here. And this is just a small sample of all the bees found in Wisconsin. So these are the bumblebees. Um, and we have some honeybees. Again, they're not native, but they do live here. Um, and there's green sweat bees. I want to show you one of those up close next, I think. They are so cool in color. Um, let's look at one of those. And then there's also these flies and wasps and a cicada. And I think we should look at, let's look at the green sweat bee next. Then let's look at a wasp because, because I think we need to see the stinger on the wasp because it's really intense. Okay, so I'm going to find, where's a green sweat bee? Oh, they're both so hard to hold because they're so tiny. This is the green sweat bee. You're not going to be able to see much. It's just a tiny little prick like this. Um, so I'm going to put my microscope back on and then we will, oops, we'll check it out. Okay. Let's go see that up close. Ooh, and this is actually much easier to see. The magnification on the scope is a little bit high for looking at really big bees, but because this is so small, you can see so much of it. So you can see the compound eyes there, the big ones on the side. Let's look at it from the side and see if we can see that eye a little better. Yeah, it's that big gray thing all along the side of the face. Let's look for the ocelli. I think these ones have it too. Oh, they're really far back on the head. I wonder if I can get them like this. Hmm, it's hard to see. 
And those antenna, I'm not sure if they're very small or if they've broken off. I will have to check the other one to see it. Let's look at the, the mandible, the mouth parts. See if we can see them on this one. So those, I believe, are the mouth parts of this little sweat bee. I just love that green color. Let's look at the, the abdomen, see if we can see more green color. So this is the abdomen, the bee butt. Sherry says we have huge bumblebees in our yard, mine too. Oh, Steve, I do have a cicada killer wasp. Uh, we will, that's the wasp I'll show you. It's huge. Let's find a wing. That is one tiny wing for this little green sweat bee. They're nice and hairy too. So cool. These are frustrating though. I think they bite. I don't think they sting so much, but they definitely bite. And I don't love them, <laughs> but they sure do look cool. All right, so that was our green sweat bee. And now let's look at that. Let's look at the cicada killer wasp. So I'm gonna flip the camera around to show you. Um, well, first I wanna, I still wanna show you the green sweat bee. So this, remember, is how big the green sweat bee was. And so we were able to see its whole face at once. It was easy to focus on. Um, this is the cicada killer wasp. It's huge. Um, and they get their name because they, they kill cicadas. And I actually have a cicada here. Um, so they are about the same, well, the cicada is a bit bigger, um, but they're about the same size. Um, and I believe these wasps both eat and lay their eggs in cicadas. So we can look at both of them up close. Um, but then I think we should find another tiny one because those are easier, easier for me to show you. Um, Rachel asks if bees have teeth. Um, I no, not like our teeth, but they do have, um, mouth parts that help them chew. Um, all right, so let's, let's check out this cicada killer wasp. And you know what? Let's get right to the stinger because that I'm sure is what people want to see. That is a big, big stinger. I mean, you can see it even just without the microscope. It's a huge stinger. And these wasps are actually pretty, pretty friendly towards humans. Um, I mean, obviously don't go, don't go trying to pick them up or anything. Um, but they, they really only care about cicadas. Um, so you don't have much to worry about from them. Um, this is the wasp's huge eye. It's enormous and it's tiny little antennas, and they're both the exact same length, so I feel like this is how large the antennas are, unless they've both broken off. Um, and let's see if they have the ocelli. I don't know if they do, it might just be a bee thing. Oh, but look, there they are behind the antennas. They're hard to see, but they're those three shiny dots. That's cool. I didn't know that. I like that. Let's look at a wing up close. This is a wasp's wing. I love that pattern to it. It's beautiful. And the edge of the, t the, edge of the wing is just gorgeous. <laughs> and let's see if we can look at the coloring on the, th the thorax a little bit. So this is the wasp, black and yellow. And all of these bees and wasps are black and yellow as an, a warning to other animals that they can sting. And so animals will avoid black and yellow and that's good for the bees because then they don't have to sting and die. Um, but it's also good for the animals that might try to eat them because it's a warning to them that they, they don't wanna eat this. There's also lots of animals that mimic this black and yellow color um, and they're not dangerous, they can't sting, but they are trying to piggyback on this, um, this warning to try and stay a little safer. 
All right, so I'm going to put the cicada killer back. And let's take a look at this cicada now. And it's 103, so I'm going to show you just a few more. And then we'll start in on our, our notes. Okay, so let's go see the cicada's eyes. Their eyes are huge and green and they stick out of the side of their head. They're super cool. And I don't know if that cracking on the surface of the eye is just because it has dried up um, or if they actually look like that when the cicada is alive. That's a little bit tricky with uh, specimens like I have. And let's see if we can find a cicada mouth. Ooh. There's this like whole part underneath the face that kind of looks like a vent to me. And I wonder if that is part of the mouth or if I just don't know what cicada noses look like. But that is a really neat structure. That's really cool. Um, let's look at a cicada wing. Looks a lot like the wasp wing. It's very big windows in the wing. And it's neat how that, I want to call them veins, but I don't, I don't know if they actually are veins, how it runs parallel to the edge there. It's so hard to keep this in focus. <laughs> um, let's look at the underbelly. Oh, I can't get close enough to get it in focus. There we go, there we go. I'm worried I'm going to hurt the wings like this, though, so I'm going to stop. And all the feet are curled up under the body, so I can't show you those. But that's a cicada cheek. Did you know when you woke up today you'd be looking at a cicada cheek? I didn't. <laughs> all right, so this was our cicada. And these are really neat because they, um, they shed their exoskeletons when they grow and when they molt. And so you can find cicada, um, not with the wings, but um, when they're before that before they have their wings, you can find that that molted exoskeleton, and they're really neat to look at. Um, if you have a magnifying glass or even a pair of binoculars, I wanted to show everybody this since this is micro explorers. So if you take a pair of binoculars and you flip them around and look through them, obviously everything looks really far away, right? But if you get something really really close like this close it becomes a microscope and it's really perfect for looking at the cicada actually um so i i totally recommend this and you can use it to look at flowers or bark um insects it's i, I wouldn't recommend bees or wasps unless you find a dead one but you can definitely follow ants along along the sidewalk or along the side of a tree so Grab your binoculars or a magnifying glass and go look at things up close. It's really fun. All right, so I'm going to put the cicada back, and I want to show you a yellow masked bee. This is the tiniest one on, on my sheet or on my, on my tray, and it's, it's so small. It's like smaller than a grain of rice, and I want to see what it looks like up close because I bet I'll be able to see a lot of detail with this one. So this is a yellow masked bee. Let's look at that. Sherry says this is creepy and neat. Those are my favorite things, creepy and neat. So remember, this is a 60 times magnification and we can see the entire body in this. Remember, we could only see the cicada's eye. So this is a teeny tiny bee. I love the little iridescent colors on the wings, all the purples and pinks. Let's try and look at its face really close. Oh, you can see the the whole, it's amazing how tiny this bee is and so much we can see in this microscope. Um, you can see the big compound eyes. I don't see the ocelli, but they might just be too small for what we're doing. Yeah, I can't get a good look at where they'd be. Let's go look and see if they have a stinger that we can see. Hmm. I cannot see a stinger on this one. It might be too small, or it might just be hard to find the angle. And those are just the feet coming around the back. Those are not stingers. 
Oh, maybe that's the angle. Hey, that might be it. Maybe. Poking out the end there. That could be a stinger. And those are all of its little feet. Ah, I love this bee. Oh, and look at its body is like bluish black. Also iridescent. It looks like a grackle. This is a grackle bee. I'm renaming it. Look, it's so pretty. Before I looked at these specimens, oh, and I love its yellow head. Of course, that's where it gets the name. This is the yellow masked bee. Um, before I had these specimens, I did not know that bees were this small. I always thought of bees as big bumblebees. This is really cool. All right. So does anybody want to see anything that I haven't shown you yet? I'm going to show you one more bee, a mason bee, because it's small and so fuzzy. Um, but if there's anything else you want to see up close, like legs or stingers or whatever, um, let me know because we're almost done with this portion of the lesson. My internet must be funny. Sorry, everyone. So this is this little mason bee's head. Look at how fuzzy and fluffy it is. And there's its big, huge compound eye. Ah, look at its fuzzy little legs. And there's its wings. It has very long antenna. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's start here. There's the top of the antenna. The antenna on this bee are almost as long as its whole abdomen. Do you see that line running across the top? That is the antenna. I love it. And it's fuzzy little... Did I say abdomen before? That was the thorax. This is the abdomen. I don't see a stinger. Could just be lost in all that fuzzy fur, though. <laughs> oh, Sherry says they think it's a grandpa bee. Definitely. Oh, this is the best. I like this bee. This is good. So Sherry asks for a paper wasp or a hornet, please. Let me see if I have one of those. You know what? All of the wasps are just labeled wasps. <laughs> Um, so I don't know their scientific names, but I will show you a different wasp. Um, sorry about that, that I don't know all their scientific names. This is the eye of the wasp. And that looks like the mandibles, the mouth parts. Um, and this wasp, the antennas look broken because they're different lengths. Um, and it has a very, very narrow neck there. And that, so we've got the head. We've got the thorax in the middle. And then we've got that narrow, narrow, oops, sorry, this is hard to show you. The narrow connector between the thorax and the abdomen and the stinger, so big. And here's this wasp's wing. This wasp has very amber, honey-colored wings. They're beautiful. And let's see if we can find a wasp foot, just for fun. I wonder if the identifying paper is gonna get in the way. Show me your feet. Oh, there's a wasp foot, the little hooks, all the spines. It's really neat. Wasp feet are pretty cool. All right. So I think if anybody has questions, type them in. Um, I think we're going to do our Micro Explorers um, notes right now. So I'm just going to do it on this piece of paper. The first thing I'm going to do is write the date, and it is 6-17-20. June 17th, 2020. So you can either write, oh, it's backwards. You can either write 6-17-20 or you can write June 17th, 2020. And I'm going to, 
I think I'm going to show you that little mason bee again. So if you want, you can draw anything that I have, um, anything that I've shown you today. You don't have to draw what I'm going to show you at the end. But I'm going to show us the mason bee again. So I'm going to write mason bee, okay? Uh, and first, draw two big circles on your note page. And they don't have to be perfect circles, but if you want, you could find something in your house like a cup or a plate to help you that you can trace to make your perfect circles. So this is what mine looks like, two circles. And I'm going to label this one up here life size. And I'm going to label this one down here larger than life. And I know I'm going fast now, but you can work on this later if you want to. You don't have to label it right now, okay? So I'm going to hold up that mason bee again. Here it is. And we're going to draw it life size. So it's, it's very, very small. It is about the size of a long grain of rice um, or maybe, maybe just about the width of a pencil if you have a pencil with an eraser on it. So I'm going to hold it up like this. I know you can't see much, but draw what you see, okay? And we remember it has a little head. It's got uh, two other body parts, the thorax in the middle and the abdomen at the end. And it's got little, little wings and six little legs coming off. And this one had very long antennas. And I'm going to draw the little pin that's holding it too. And I'm going to draw my thumb holding it in place. And my finger. Oops, I made the needle. <laughs> Uh-oh, I made the needle going through my thumb. So this is my, my life-size drawing of the mason bee. And it's about life-size. And if you wanted to find a bug later to draw, you could just take, take your notebook right outside and put the, the insect right near it, okay? So now I am going to flip the camera around so that you can see it up close. And I can't draw and hold it at the same time under the microscope because it's, uh, I don't wanna break the bee. Um, so I'm not gonna draw this, but if anyone wants to draw this uh, larger than life, I'm gonna show it to you for Oh, well, maybe about a minute, okay? So you can get another look at it. So I'm gonna flip this around and let me get that B in here. And I think, I think that's a pretty good view. Why don't you draw that up close? If anyone has any requests, I think there's only a few people left watching, taking notes with me. Let me know if you'd like to see another part of it. And I'm glad for all the people who are seeing that they enjoyed this. I love doing this. So I'm really glad you like watching it too. This is super fun for me. Um, so if you have any suggestions for other lessons, other things you want to see up close, let me know. Um, we've already done flowers up close. I think we're going to do some, some water critters. I have another microscope that should be here later today. Um, we'll see. I ordered it a month ago. <laughs> um, so if that one shows up, I would love to do water critters soon. I'll show you guys some Daphnia. They're my favorite. So type suggestions in or any last minute questions. We are almost done with this lesson today. And right now we're looking at a mason bee up close for anyone who wants to do some eight minute, or not eight minute notes, we're doing micro explorers journaling. So right now we're drawing this bee larger than life. And it's so shaky, I'm very sorry it's so shaky. All right, everyone, finish up. Take a screenshot if you want, you can keep drawing later. That's a good point, you can screenshot any of this and draw it for your nature journal later. Just go back or pause it. You don't have to screenshot it. Okay, my hand can't, can't even hold it a little bit steady anymore, so we're going to have to be done. Um, so this is our tiny little mason bee, my new favorite bee. I love it. Maybe I'll have to do a bigger drawing or painting of it sometime. Um, okay, everybody, so that is, that is the end of our eight-minute notes. Uh, or I keep calling it eight-minute notes. I love them so much. Um, I do want to share that we have a new 
bug identification sheet just for kids. Um, it doesn't take you to species, but it does show you um, a bumblebee, a honeybee, a wasp, an ant, a moth, a butterfly, and a fly. Um, so you can see, try to figure out exactly what you're looking at. Um, and I don't think it's going to be up online today, but it will be up Oh, in the next next few days or so. It's one of the things we created for summer camp. So uh, it's, it's going to take us a minute to put it online. Um, okay, you know what? We didn't look at any flies. So I'm going to show you one more fly, and then I'm going to say goodbye for real. Okay? So let's look at this little fly that looks a little like a bee. Oops. Giant eyes. You guys get a bonus. Everyone else was already leaving so far because they thought we were just doing notes and we're done. Bonus bugs. Look at those little fly wings. Um, it's hard to see when it's so close, but they're, they lay back on the body in a slightly different position than bees and wasps hold their wings. There's a little fly butt. <laughs> its legs are all tucked up very tightly. It's hard to show you the legs. And let's see if we can find a fly mouth. Ooh. Looks like it's a little proboscis sticking out. That's sort of like a tongue for them. I'm sure an entomologist would probably roll their eyes at me for saying that, but that's what I think of when I think of proboscis. Okay, so that was the fly. And now we're officially done. <laughs> so I want to say thank you for joining me and let me know if you have other suggestions for lessons. And all of this is always free for anyone to watch. So if you have the means and you've been enjoying it and you want to drop a little donation our way to keep supporting this, we would love it. And if not, they will still be free for you to enjoy. So go outside, go find some insects, take a look, and uh, I'll see you next time. Bye, everybody. Thanks.